Uh, Dr. Caleb, thank you for your testimony today. I know you've been getting a lot of questions on the baby formula shortage. Uh, I just wanted to share with you, I've been hearing from hundreds of Michigan families about how this uh, formula shortage is affecting them and or someone they know. And I just wanted to share a couple of stories with you and ask for how you as an agency can respond to them. A father in Manton, Michigan wrote, my child has an allergy to milk, so she has to have a very specific formula. Now that that formula is short, other babies that don't need the type of formula that is necessary for my daughter are allowed to purchase it through the WIC program, making her formula even more scarce. I've had to resort to getting formula from out of state and Canada at times. The shipping costs are a huge burden on my family and it requires hours of research that I could be spending with my family. And a mother in my Calm County wrote, I've had issues finding my son's formula since October of 2021. So I bought in bulk. Then everything I had on hand was recalled. I could get it at Target for a few weeks and they stopped having it. Even Amazon stopped getting it back in March of this year. I had to switch to a different kind of formula. I'm fortunate enough to be able to afford and buy multiple cans at a time. So when I found it at Costco, my mom, me, and my sister bought what I needed to get through six weeks. Now the kind my son is on isn't even in stock at Costco. I pray I have enough to get him to his first birthday. My friends have, have to search multiple stores to find the kind their baby is on. Another ends up changing formula each time she runs out because it's all she can find. We just can't breastfeed. Our babies rely on formula and it's, being, it's scary being a mother right now. I will also add a, a local, local grocery store owner also wrote me saying it is heart wrenching to have to tell our customers that we have no baby formula to offer them. We are concerned that our local babies are not getting the nutrition they need. Nutrition in general is a very challenging problem in our rural area. Uh, Dr. Califf, what would you like to tell these parents who are concerned about just simply finding food for their babies? I'll tell them that we are uh, very concerned and um, feel badly that they're going through this and we're doing everything we can uh, to fix it. And, and if I could make a couple of quick points um, about it, about things that you brought up, um, you know, as I mentioned, the sales are actually higher than they were. The people are buying more formula now than before the recall. And so we have a problem of distribution. The FDA has no access right now into the supply chain data from the companies that manufacture and sell the formula. So a good bit of my week this week is getting on the phone with CEOs using an old fashioned method called a telephone to try to get the right product to the right place in an organized way. We're requesting again that we have more authority to look at the uh, supply chains much like the banks did years ago, uh, so that we can test and preempt these kinds of problems rather than having to uh, react to them. Well, thank you, Dr. Carroll. Just a quick question, also changing gears a bit on standards of identity. Uh, the lack of enforcement of dairy standards is something I've raised with you and several of your uh, predecessors. I'm hoping that the forthcoming guidance will move beyond the current practice of non-enforcement and require everyone to simply follow the law. Uh, a related issue I wanted to raise with you is the standard of identity for yogurt. And it's my understanding that uh, the FDA recently updated this in June of 2021, but the industry actually uh, does not support that 